Canadian football is a magic show, a century-old spectacle, grown men battling to cross a line drawn in the dirt. It is a game filled with heroes, great players and great teams, bringing championship pride to their faithful fans. The field is a battleground where skill and determination are the tools of the trade. It is a game that has grabbed the nation by the heart. An annual struggle becomes an epic battle as teams fight for the ultimate glory. The chance to hold the Grey Cup and become forever known as a champion. and the Grey Cup, Hamilton was home to Canadian football. In 1869, a room over George Lee's fruit store was the game's first headquarters. But the philosophy of the many teams that followed was forged and shaped in the smoke of the city's steel mills, where the heat melted away the frills and left the basic iron. The Hamilton Alerts won the city's first Grey Cup in 1912, but they were soon expelled from the league for unsportsmanlike behavior. The Hamilton Wildcats won the 1943 Grey Cup to add to the five already won by the Hamilton Tigers. While the fans loved their football, it turned out that two teams were too many. At the time war broke out, there was the Hamilton Tigers and they played in what was known then as the Big Four. That was the senior level of football in the East. And the Wildcats had a team that played in the Ontario Rugby Football Union, which was perceived to be the lower level. And uh, football was failing in Hamilton as a result of the two teams. And uh, that resulted in the amalgamation that took place to form the Tiger Cats. And home for the Tiger Cats was Hamilton's Civic Stadium. When I was growing up in Hamilton, I really followed the football. It, it was the, the game in town. It was what uh, everybody followed as far as the sport in, in, uh, in Hamilton was concerned. And yes, I snuck into to Civic Stadium a few times to watch football games. I can remember going down to uh, the old HAAA grounds, which was the other sort of sporting area in Hamilton where the Tiger Cats sort of practiced and dressed. And, and that was part of the, the fun of, of, of following the Tiger Cats in those days. In the fourth year of the Tiger Cats, Hamilton faced Winnipeg in the 1953 Grey Cup. At Toronto's Varsity Stadium, they defeated the Blue Bombers 12 to six, and joyous fans celebrated the new team's first Grey Cup championship. Over the next four years, the Tiger Cats signed the building blocks of a dynasty. Coach Jim Trimble, quarterback Bernie Filoni, and a perennial all-star, John Barrow. John Barrow was the best defensive lineman, I will say, that I ever played against. He was strong, but he was also quick. And the thing that I think matters the most, he was a very smart player. John Barrow. I mean, to me, I wanted to know where he was on the football field every time I came up over the ball playing the Hamilton Tiger Cats. He was tough. He didn't tackle you. He ran over you. In 1957, quarterback Bernie Filoni led the Ticats to the top of the East. Facing the Western champion Winnipeg Blue Bombers in the Grey Cup game, the powerful Hamilton squad built up a commanding lead. Late in the game, with the Ticats leading by 25 points, Hamilton defensive halfback Ray Bowell intercepted a pass and headed for the end zone. He started a run down the sideline and some lawyer was standing on the sideline and stuck his foot out and tripped him. 
It was a bizarre play, and uh, it went down, I think, uh, as one of the most bizarre plays in the Canadian Football League championship game, particularly for a fan coming off like that and tripping up the player. After that, there was uh, rules brought in to provide for that. If there's interference by a, a non-participant, the team would not suffer because somebody did something like that. The interference had no effect on the outcome, and the Thai Cats celebrated a 32-7 Grey Cup victory. The following year, a rugged defensive lineman joined the club, Boston native Angelo Mosca. When I came to Hamilton, this town represented steel. There was 45,000 people working in the steel mill. They drank hard, they ate hard, they played hard, and I joined them and had a ball. A ferocious player, Mosca became one of the most feared defenders in the game. I pushed the envelope, and a lot of people didn't like that. But it was part of the game, and I played the game right to its fullest. I think he got a bad rap many times for being a dirty football player, but uh, in my mind, Angela was a, a, a good football player. Uh, he just played for keeps. Paired with veteran John Barrow, the combination terrorized Eastern offenses. The only way you could get either one of them out of a football game was to take a 30-30 and shoot them right between the eyes because they would not mess it down or play. I think Angelo, uh, if he played 15 or 16 years and he missed five games, I would be very, very, very surprised. The same thing can be said for John Barrow. John Barrow and I played together for 11 and a half years side by side. I was a physical player, and John was the more dipsy-doodle type guy. That's why we had great success. In 1958 and 59, the Ticats captured the East, but both times fell to Winnipeg in the Grey Cup. The following year, they strengthened their roster with the arrival of Mr. Everything, Garney Henley. When I first came to Canada, I hardly left the field. I played both ways, and uh, it was just something that uh, I got used to, and uh, I don't know how I did it when I think back on it, because it was so much running and so much running. And they, I used to, they used to take me out for uh, the punt team, and I would say, just leave me in, because it's further to the bench than it would be just to run downfield. Garney Henley, he was a real game breaker. I mean, he was uh, the quarterback on defense, without question, for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And he could do it all. I mean, he could come over and play offense and receiver or, or whatever. He intercepted quite a number of passes from us over a period of years. And uh, Henley, again, uh, probably the best defensive back I ever saw from Hamilton. A 1960 trade with Montreal brought star receiver Hal Patterson to Hamilton. Filoni and Patterson powered the Ticats offense as rookie head coach Ralph Sazio took the team to the 1963 Grey Cup in Vancouver. Hamilton quarterback Bernie Filoni enjoyed an MVP performance, but that day the headlines belonged to Angelo Mosca for his hit on BC star running back Willie Fleming. What happens is I dive right over the top of Willie, my knee catches the back of his head. Because Mosca hit Willie Fleming, it was a dirty hit. There was no penalty call on the play. And Willie got knocked out of the game. And uh, I always said I think Willie could have come back. Without Fleming, the BC offense struggled, and the Ticats celebrated a 21-10 Grey Cup victory. While Hamilton lost a rematch with the BC Lions the following year, 1965 saw the team make a fifth consecutive Grey Cup appearance. Playing against Winnipeg in Toronto's CNE Stadium, Gale Force wins made kicking the ball a game of chance. Catching the punt in that win was really hell because they only had to give you the five yards and by that time, you know, they were all standing around just looking at you and the wind would play so many tricks with the darn ball all the time and so Boy, you just had to be on your toes all the time, and if you ever took your eyes off of it, you were dead. Winnipeg coach Bud Grant decided against punting into the wind, and three times the Bombers conceded a two-point safety touch. Those six points gave Hamilton a Grey Cup championship. In 1967, 
a trade with Edmonton brought veteran receiver Tommy Joe Coffey to Hamilton. On both sides of the ball, the Ticats were one of the most powerful teams in the game. That year, 1967, was, I think, the best team that I played on. Defensively, offensively, uh, we were as good as anybody. In the 1967 Grey Cup, quarterback Joe Zuger led Hamilton against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. For the entire 60 minutes, the Western champion Riders were overwhelmed as the Ticats dominated every phase of the game. They shut us down, and we didn't think that could be done, but their defense dominated us, and uh, they deserved to win that football game, and they did, 24 to one. They won it very convincingly. I was hoping they'd play the last quarter in straight time because we could not move the football on them that day. They shut us down pretty good. The Hamilton Tiger Cats left the field champions. Following the victory celebration, Coach Ralph Sazio made the move to the front office. At contract time, he proved to be as tough behind a desk as on the sidelines. You don't use the word negotiate and Ralph Sazio in the same breath because they're not synonymous with one another. It's very dictatorial. Ralph says, I'll give you this, and if you don't like it, then take a hike. And you know the thing about it is you probably meant it. Those weren't negotiations, those were wars. Ralph's way of negotiating was yelling and screaming. And I said, uh, pay me or trade me. He said, here's the phone. But Sazio did have an eye for talent. In 1971, he landed a local boy who'd grown up dreaming of being a tie cat, receiver Tony Gabriel. They gave me number 77, and Hal Patterson's number. Uh, he was just the finest receiver that I'd ever seen in a, in a tie cat uniform. And to get to wear his number was, was just, you know, uh, top drawer. And uh, to come back to Hamilton and, and start in the CFL, it, it was a dream come true. 1972 saw the arrival of a rookie quarterback who became an instant star, Chuck Ely. I think Chuck Ely had a winning attitude that he brought. He also had a very cool manner under pressure and he was decisive. And when uh, someone's like that in the huddle, you listen. In the 1972 Grey Cup game, it was the rookie Chuck Ely against the veteran Ron Lancaster and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. In front of the hometown fans, Ely performed like a veteran. Late in the game, with the score tied at 10, the Chuck Ely to Tony Gabriel combination was unstoppable. Chuck Ely marched that football team down the field. It probably is uh, as good a drive as you like to see a quarterback have at the end of the game. He threw the ball to Gabriel here, he hit Gabriel across the middle, and he put it in position for Ian Sunner to kick a field goal on the last play of the game. 19-year-old Ian Sunter's 34-yard field goal brought the Ticats their sixth Grey Cup championship. The victory provided a perfect ending to the long career of fan favorite Angelo Mosca. Through the 70s, the Hamilton Tiger Cats saw little success. But the old steel tough defensive pride was soon rekindled with the arrival of Grover Covington from Montreal and a middle linebacker from Georgia who was made for Hamilton football, Ben Zambiazzi. This league is meant for overachievers that are undersized, and that's what I am. I couldn't run a fast 40, I couldn't lift a whole lot of weight. But for some reason, I could play football and find the ball and make tackles. Hamilton was a hard, uh, tough, steel town. And, and then I, I come to find out about the, you know, the tradition. They love their defense. It's a great place. If you're a defensive player, you want to play in Hamilton. As the rejuvenated Hamilton defense made its presence felt, their offense depended on a clutch receiver from Sault Ste. Marie. Rocky Di Pietro. I think my eyes were really open. Like uh, it was such a, a big city to me, and uh, coming into that stadium, especially the setting, Iverwind Stadium, was set right in the middle of a neighborhood, 
Everything just seems so focused on the stadium, everything's so intense and, um, you know, it, it was great. It was a great environment for me. Once known as Civic Stadium, Ivor Wynn gave the Ticats a definite home field advantage. I think teams were a little intimidated coming in there. Certainly uh, in that type of stadium where uh, there's a cement wall five feet high, yeah, about uh, six feet away from the sideline, and people are right on top of you. And We knew that that would be a big advantage for us. The wall is our friend. The fans are like on top of you, you're so close. And, and the players know when they come to Ivan Wynn, the sidelines aren't friendly because it's a big concrete wall that, that you don't have much space. So when you play there, you know exactly where that wall is. In the 1986 Grey Cup, Mike Kerrigan and the Hamilton Tiger Cats faced Matt Dunnigan and the Edmonton Eskimos. Going into the game, uh, I believe we're at least a 20-point underdog going into a strong, against a strong Edmonton uh, team. And nobody really gave us much of a chance. I've never seen a group of guys so ready to win. Our defense put tremendous pressure on Dunnigan the whole day long. And we felt, we felt that they, we would not allow them we would not allow them to beat us. Grey Cup MVP Mike Kerrigan passed for more than 300 yards and two touchdowns. But it was a rookie kicker who stole the show, Paul Osbaldiston. I remember lining up to kick the football and feeling my legs being so weak and, and shaking that, that all that went through my head was, how am I going to you know, get to the ball and just kick it? Um, I was so nervous. Osbaldiston performed like a veteran with a record six field goals in a 39 to 15 victory. Man, was he a blessing because he didn't miss anything. The, the kicks that he kicked were not like, oh, it was a 20 yard kick. They were like 47, 50, uh, 52. I mean, they were good kick, good long size, you know, de decent kicks. And he put them right through the uprights. After nine years as owner, Harold Ballard had his first Grey Cup. Fans flooded the streets to say, thank you. The response was unbelievable. The town was just going crazy. They went crazy the night before when we had the Grey Cup parade. There was about 30,000 people out. Pouring down rain, um, the parade route was just packed. Everybody got in these convertibles and rode down the streets of Hamilton with people on both sides. People came out from work, you know, and were standing there and throwing confetti in the air and just so happy and proud to have another championship. In 1997, Hamilton recorded only two victories and finished last in the CFL's Eastern Division. In desperate need of help, the team recruited head coach Ron Lancaster and the heart of the Edmonton offense, quarterback Danny McManus and receiver Darren Flutie. But coach Lancaster, Danny and myself went to a football team that believe it or not from a 2-16 and 16 team the year before was a very good football team and anyone that played them in 97 knew they were a good football team but they stunk offensively they they were really bad and I don't know for whatever reason because that they had good personnel but they couldn't do anything offensively their defense carried them so you know you're going to a football team that has a great defense and we all know defense win, wins championships so if we could do anything offensively we had a chance to win football games the McManus fluted combination more than lived up to its billing. In a single season, they helped turn the Ticats into a Grey Cup finalist. Facing the Calgary Stampeders, fans were treated to a thrilling battle. As the clock ran down, Hamilton held a single point lead. But on the final play of the game, a Mark McLaughlin field goal cost the Ticats the victory. As Calgary celebrated, Hamilton looked ahead. When we went to camp next year, you could get the feeling from these guys that, you know, we want to win that Grey Cup this year because we didn't get it done last year when we led with a minute left in the game. We watched the, the 98 Grey Cup film the first day of training camp. Coach Lancaster put that on and said the 98 was a great season. But, but remember this game and remember how you felt at the end of this game. And uh, we, we just really had unfinished business in 99. After a second-place regular season finish, 
the Hamilton Tiger Cats captured the East before heading to Vancouver for a Grey Cup rematch with the Calgary Stampeders. Getting back to the, the Grey Cup after having a taste of it in, in 98 uh, was a special feeling for us as Thai Cats. Uh, going back there and then even having the, the ability to play against a team that beat us the year before, the Calgary Stampeders. Uh, it was uh, something we were focused on all week. We knew we, we didn't want the same thing to happen again. We didn't want to, to be at the dance and then not get invited to dance. In the 1999 Grey Cup, the Thai Cats left nothing to chance. From the opening kickoff, they dominated the game as they built up a 21-0 halftime lead. McManus and Flutie combined for two spectacular touchdowns as the Hamilton Tiger Cats gained their revenge with a 32-21 victory. It was a special Grey Cup to the standpoint of seeing guys on the podium that had never been there, uh, or guys that went through the 2-16 and 16 season. That game kind of erased those bad years at Hamilton, and a lot of those guys that were on that podium went through it. That was just a great day. I, mean, I, I don't think we were surprised at winning that game for some reason. I think had we won in 98, we would have been really surprised at winning. I think when we won in 99, it was, uh, well, hey, that's what we came here for. You know, That's what this whole season has been about. The 1999 championship was the eighth Grey Cup victory in the long and proud tradition of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. I wasn't around for the early days of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, obviously, but uh, the days of Bernie Filoni, Angelo Mosco. And you're constantly reminded in that city about those days because those are the heydays of Hamilton and the CFL. And it's just a great feeling because you, you saw those people around the football team all the time. So it was a tremendous city to play in as a player. What I appreciate about the Hamilton fans so much is their appreciation of effort. They're a hard-working crowd. I mean, they work. We're, we're in a steel city. This is a blue-collar town, and they appreciate hard work. So if you were a player that gave it 110% every game, then they appreciated that. As long as there's been Hamilton Tiger Cat football, there's been the players that, that are the tough defensive players, the tough offensive players, the guys that will play through anything, um, the hard hitters. It's, it's a neat place to play football. Anybody that is a Canadian Football League fan needs to experience the Hamilton fans at least once.